In today's video, we'll be going over the big three, that's Bitcoin, Solana, and Ethereum. Also following up on this Bitcoin trade setup that we looked at here over the past week, which is still active, although it is going to probably come into some sort of some sort of close relatively soon. And other than that, I want to once again let you know that you can still get 20% off of all of the programs and services that we do have in our Teachable School in the link in the description below with the code BDAY in all capitals for just one more day, actually. Or is it two more days or one more day? I think it's one more day. End of Monday night, so about one more day left to go. And not only is it 20% off for everything, but for the crown quant automation can she try the first month for uh, eighty percent off, which is about thirty bucks there. Um, so you can try it for a very, 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 very low dollar amount. You can have, well, you can have a nice little bot slave automate your trades, make money for you in your sleep, or or also lose money for yourself as well, depending upon how good your strategy creation is. Of course, we do provide templates for that that you can use and iterate off of. Anyways, um, first things first. Let's actually start start this one off with no. Let's start it off with a sentiment check. Actually, a good review right here of the crown quant automation, I should say. Uh, but sentiment check. I did post a nice uh, poll yesterday with what do you think? What do you think on the sentiment right now? Uh, the choices were it's bad. It's not that bad. It's really bad. And fuck you for asking. And you know what? It's not that bad actually did win. But when you do combine the bads and the fuck you, which is uh, which is a very, uh, I would assume that that's very, very bad. Uh, that would be the clear winner. In fact, fuck you for asking almost uh, one third of the results. Quite interesting indeed. Anyways, um, let's actually start off this analysis with Solana right here. Solana can continues to dip back into this sort of long-term accumulation zone, if you want to call it that, uh, between about 120 or just, uh, yeah, about 120 to the downside uh, versus about 125. We have seen several attempts within this region over time. And to be fair, you know, Solana does look like at least it at least has one more bounce in it. Um, and in fact, if I was just looking at Solana here, I would say Solana um, compared to especially especially Ethereum, but, uh, but also even Bitcoin is holding things up relatively well. Um, we do see that on the daily time frame, there is some bullish divergence uh, building between the lows that we did see on the 1st of September and kind of what we've seen uh, throughout this past week. The RSI is putting in slightly higher lows right there. Even the daily jewels start to turn it around as, as, as well. And if we go over here, the daily stochastic oscillator um, does look like it is going to be positioned to once again cross the upside uh, from, from a very, 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 very low level here as well, assuming that Solana can close today out above about 124 or so. Um, you know, so I do suspect that Solana has you know, at least another bounce in it um, on the relatively short-term time frames. It looks like the LARP lines are continuing to play out. And, I, you know, I don't know if I'd say that things are necessarily going to go this high uh, from this bounce, but I do think that there will be a bounce that emerges from here, um, probably close to, you know, 140, maybe even as much as uh, 145, 150-ish region. Somewhere in that pocket right there would be um, fair game. Doesn't really do anything overall for it. And unfortunately for Solana, um, it will generally be tethered to Bitcoin's moves anyway. So, if Bitcoin does have like a true breakdown, which is yet to be seen, and to be fair, Bitcoin has not had that just yet, um, <clears throat> then you know it's hard to imagine that Solana is going to keep it up here. And you would kind of be expecting Solana to make an attempt, uh, certainly below 100 bucks if that does happen. You know, maybe closer to 80 bucks. Um, but for right now, you know, if Solana was on its own, I would actually say it probably looks the best out of the big three. Um, if we go over here to the five-day time frame and also the three-day time frame, we can, or sorry, the uh, the weekly time frame, we can also see that Solana is playing off this trend line regression. Um, it has come all the way down here from, I think, a few videos ago that we spoke about on the big three. Um, the current pivot is actually 143. Obviously, that's not going to be hit uh, today, but that is not closing today. What does the weekly say? Weekly says 150. Also not going to be uh, the one for today as well, but I will be interested to see what that updates to on tomorrow's open. This trend line regression right here, again, has another three days left to go. So I would be saying that, hey, if this bounce does come somewhere around 140, if you see Solana close above about 140, um, let's see, what date would this be? This would be about Wednesday of this coming week. Uh, that would be a good sign that it, that this is going to play out yet again. And this has been holding the lows basically since December of 2022, which was essentially the you know the the, the last macro low for Solana right here, um, all the way down around literally under ten dollars, <laughs> literally under fucking ten dollars. Connected with the lows from uh, September of 2023 right here. Yet again in or preceding this rally from about 120 to what or actually 
actually almost 200 that we saw in July and perhaps uh, perhaps connecting yet again right here. So I would be looking at that um, with interest because if Solana does hold, that is going to be a good, uh, good indication that it will continue to it will continue to trade sideways within this range, but it will be probably one of the best gainers if and when Bitcoin does regain its fo uh, footing. Um, but that's a question that's a question that remains, you know, remains to be seen. But basically, if Bitcoin can be healthy, Solana will very likely be one of the better actors, um, certainly of the big three, but probably just generally in the market. Um, it has kind of, you know, continued to, to prove itself here um, in comparison to the other ones that we are about to look at. In fact, looking at Solana versus Bitcoin, you can see that it's, I, I mean, very clearly putting in higher lows over time. Uh, this is a daily time frame, very likely continues a little bit more from there. Uh, weekly time frame, same shit. I mean, just kind of wedging itself into this tightening range, which is what you do expect on a, you know, healthy consolidation around the highs. Again, it is showing relative strength. The only re or the only reason, no, the only way that I really get concerned about Solana versus its Bitcoin parent is if it did come back down, you know, below this range low right here, which obviously it's you know it's a little bit closer to the, to, uh, to the middle of the range. But what's more important here is that you have higher lows the whole way through. One, two, maybe working on number three could come down a little bit more first um, and still be a higher low. But ultimately, that's what I'd be intent on watching as of the current moment, and does suggest that Solana is you know is is it, it is the strongest, actually. It is the strongest um, of the big three. Very few cryptos right now are, uh, are holding their own in that regard. Moving on to Ethereum right here. Ethereum um, is kind of an interesting one because it is certainly the most weak out of the big three, but... It's also in a pretty damn good area for a nice bounce here. So we've had this area marked off for a long time around very low $2,000 territory. It got tested once back on over here in the August dump, got tested again in the September dump as well. <clears throat> I do think that this area will grind, or price will grind out this area a little bit more. You probably do get a few more attempts down around about $2,100. Um, yeah, about $2,100, you know, give or take about 50 bucks from that number. But as you can see, you know, the oscillators right here, momentum oscillators are starting to really reset heavily. Um, you know, th this 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 is the five day, and we're already seeing it get down into you know some some critical regions. The weekly time frame, same shit as well. You know, I am inclined to say that while it is likely to grind this area out a little bit more um, with wicks down, perhaps you know around these weekly lows. Um, I would be looking for another bounce attempt off this one as well before a potential real breakdown. So what is it likely to look like? Um, let me give out my little drawing tool right here. You know, could grind this area out a few more times. One more bounce. The real question is, on this next bounce, does a lower high get put in or not? Um, because 2,500 is going to be a pretty nice area for a lower high. Uh, and of course, in order to actually get another higher high, I'd have to trade above your August highs all the way up here at about 2,800. So... Um, kind of wrapping up my thoughts on Ethereum. It's definitely the weakest of the big three. I don't think it's ready to fully break down just yet. I do think that you will, however, see some retests of these wicks down here, but those will likely be the impetus for a bounce relatively soon. We can see even the daily right here will actually turn up probably today, assuming that Ethereum does close above 2240. So this one's setting up a little bit more for a bounce first, but the real the uh, next skill for, you know, if you are trading Ethereum, I do not, uh, is looking or <laughs> watching for that next lower high. I suspect that that probably also does correlate well with a nice major fib. And let's see, what do you know? You got the 50% retracement pretty much right around there. So that'd be a great place um, for a lower high if this thing is actually going to, you know, truly break down. Again, at the end of the day, it mostly depends on what Bitcoin's going to be doing because if Bitcoin doesn't break down, it's hard to imagine that other things will not follow suit. And just like if, and it, well, and also just like if Bitcoin does break down, I mean, I would be expecting most other things to follow suit as well. So um, Bitcoin will be kind of like the uh, the the uh, the signpost. And then you kind of look at your alts for, well, varying degrees of strength and weakness here. But, you know, Ethereum would be more on the weak side. Again, don't confuse that with a likely bounce to come after maybe another retest of these lows here. Um, moving on to the Ethereum and Bitcoin pairing. Uh, terrible, <laughs> really fucking bad. Here's a quarterly right here. You can see that the quarterly is actually traded below the last potential hammer dildo low. Again, um, you know, I don't really see uh, like candle formations work out all that well, at least in cryptocurrency. Maybe in traditional markets, this does work out a little bit better. But, you know, uh, a lot of the time people would look at this and be like, hey, that's a that's a quarterly hammer. It's green, must go up. That's a reversal. I read it on Investopedia for fucking sure. 
I just don't see it work out that much, especially when it fails to reclaim major moving averages. In fact, I would, um, you know, I would look at this as a rejection of the five exponential and actually the five and the 21 are about to cross the downside right here. So, you know, Ethereum versus Bitcoin um, pair still looks, I would say, ugly as fuck, um, continues to look ugly as fuck. Is it, however, going to get a bounce in the short term? Very easily, uh, or very likely, very easily, I'd suspect. Um, you know, you are seeing momentum also just turn back up. We are seeing uh, these three spike lows right here. A lot of the time, you know, you will get a nice rally from there. This thing could rally up all the way to the monthly breakdown point at four spots or like four and a half million satoshis, and still be pretty fucking, uh, pretty fucking bad. So, um, going over here to the weekly time frame. Um, again, you know, short term does it set up for a bounce. We are starting to see, uh, we you know, we are starting to see momentum losses getting into really critical zones here. So I, I'm not not like fully convinced that this is like the move just yet. But um, perhaps a bounce first, you know, retest the breakdown region, and then perhaps continuation. Um, again, that's going to take some time. You know, perhaps into uh, perhaps into December, I would suspect. So you know, again, th things do seem like they're kind of getting drawn out a little bit more. But that is what it is. Markets are here to not entertain you they're here to bore the fuck out of you and then take your money uh, <laughs> generally anyways um i do want to get over to bitcoin now let's go and first should we revisit this should we revisit that yeah let's revisit this so um the short setup that we looked at that fired off uh, earlier this past week um this one is still active I, I do want to update it um in the sense that the daily pivot now or the daily five exponential which this one's based off of it's currently at fifty five thousand two twenty seven or basically 55,200. So, you know, as long as Bitcoin's below there, this one will remain open for another day. That also does imply that Bitcoin closes above there. This one will close. It will take profit. I mean, that is uh, about a $3,000 profitable trade. Not bad. Um, but, uh, you know, on a Sunday, typically, you know, not too much going on. And I expect that we actually see this one likely close early this coming week. Why do I say that? Because when we go into the strategy tester right here and we go in, into the performance summary, we can see that the average amount of bars in winning trades is actually five. The average amount of bars in losing trades is two. And the average winning trade is almost 9%. All of these are basically hit. Um, so I would say that, you know, the juice has likely been squeezed from this trade. Doesn't mean that another one can't emerge later on. And maybe this one is going to be an overperformer. It's possible. But if you are going off of averages, you know, all of these have been hit basically. Uh, to the downside, we've seen a 9% move from that open. We've also seen uh, this is going to be day number four. So day number five would be tomorrow. So again, when, it, you know, when you think in terms of averages, likely a good portion of this is already done. Um, or most of it is 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 likely overdone. Um, you know, could it be that it, again? It's going to be an overperforming. You get like a major move to the downside, and you know, this one completely you know shatters the uh, those averages. Possible, yes, but again, when you're thinking in terms of averages, it's less fucking likely. That's what we're interested in here. Less likely, <laughs> less likely probabilities going over here. I always want to remind myself, and I'm going to continue to remind, to remind myself, probably to uh, to your detriment, um, that as long as as we are not past at least the 15th day of the month of September, it is very unlikely that the low is actually already in. Um, and I would even extend that date probably closer to the quad witching date, which is, let me just double check. Um, I believe that is the 20th. Yeah, the 20th. So um, about uh, about a, almost two weeks, a little bit less than two weeks from now. Um, still have to be, at least in my opinion, more conservative here. Not, nece not necessarily more conservative, but um, more defensive towards further downside. Uh, but now that we are in the ninth, no, eighth day, eighth day of September, um, how many times in the past have we seen the low within the first eight days of September? We've seen it once, we've seen it twice, we've seen it three times, we've seen it four times. Um, yeah, we've seen it four times, four times out of uh, 14, or yeah, uh, four times out of 14. Um, so, you know, Getting a little bit closer there, yes, um, but uh, but still, I would hold a little bit of reservation in, until we're at least to day number fifteen, which, by the way, will be, I believe, this coming week. Uh, no, yeah, it'll be literally in one week from today. Jesus Christ, how do how can I not do my mental math today? Um, yeah, all right, fair enough. Well, that's that for that. Let's get back into some Bitcoin price action right here. Um, even for Bitcoin, 
you know, could we see a little bit of a short-term bounce? I mean, momentum also does a pretty fucking beat up here over the weekends. Uh, we did see a rally to almost 55, which we said was likely, but this is going to continue up very, very likely here as well, per perhaps providing the impetus for another short-term bounce to open up this this uh, this new week. Um, 53,900 is the current pivot, basically, and Bitcoin is living about 400 bucks above that number. Keep in mind that Bitcoin can bounce up, you know, Bitcoin could bounce up all the way to 58,000 bucks, and it would still be another lower high. That's the problem with what's going on right now and I always want to humble myself by looking at the inverted chart right here which you know it's hard to argue that that's uh it's hard to argue against that <laughs> I'll just put it that way um but hey you know if if Solana was a leader and Solana was the one that was kind of um you know marking everything else off of I would say hey this market's I mean, it's probably going to continue to get more boring here, but it's probably fine. It's probably going to continue to hold these regions. Bitcoin, uh, a little bit more or less under pressure. So um, these next couple of weeks are going to be very, very revealing. Again, if Bitcoin is going to continue to the downside, we do really expect it within this next, It's I guess it's like 12 days now. Um, so we'll see how far things go to the downside between now and then. And after that, very likely we do see at least a relief rally to end off September. And October typically has been a rather green and bullish month for Bitcoin. In fact, probably one of the best months for Bitcoin um, in terms of uh, in terms of average returns. So uh, the real question to me is, again, you know, how how bad do things get in the short term um, between now and then? And after that, you know, I'd, I'd at least be expecting, you know, a, a decent rally attempt. So um, what else can we say? What or what else can we say about Bitcoin in the short term? Um, do we have anything for the HPDR? I think we already looked at that actually for yesterday's video. Um, Let's see. Come on, show it to me. Daily, not giving me too much. I'm again, you know, could very easily be a short term bounce here, probably back up to, I would say, at least 55, but maybe even 56 and change. Uh, just keep in mind, as long as the thing's below even, you know, 58, 59, still another lower high. So that's kind of the problem here. You can have like a multi thousand dollar rally, it doesn't really do all that much. I think perhaps the better uh, question to be asking is, you know, what's, what's the worst case scenario to the downside? We went over that in yesterday's video. Um, of course, Still believe that that's around forty three thousand bucks. Again, that's worst case scenario in my opinion. Obviously, it can update over time, but um, you know, in this case right here, the weekly for for the HPDR bands is playing between the sixty one eight level and the seventy eight six level, which is essentially fifty thousand versus fifty seven and change, something like that. So, uh, likely our range for the next week, week and a half to come. So, anyways, I'm gonna be signing off on that note. As always, I want to wish you the best of best. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully next time.